Hi students, welcome back as we get ready to dive into module 12. And in this module, we'll be talking about the equipment that you'll find or that you may find in someone's home, um, how to utilize it, what it's called, and then how to assist someone to um, put a wheelchair in and out of the car. That's an important skill to have if um, the person that you're caring for uses a wheelchair. It's where I find a lot of my uh, patients' families really struggle. So I wanted to add that in our presentation. So let me go ahead and share my screen with you. Okay. So here we go. Please feel free to put the um, YouTube on closed caption and choose the language of your preference for the rest of this module. All right. So let's start with some of the assistive devices that you'll find in the home that are more common. Assistive devices are used for safety, to help someone get around, um, to prevent falls, and can be used and prescribed for all kinds of different reasons. Generally, if a patient or a client has a piece of equipment, a doctor or a physical therapist has prescribed that and instructed them in use. All right, so the very first item is a front-wheeled walker. A front-wheeled walker has two wheels in the front and it has um, posts or feet in the back. And sometimes people will put tennis balls on those back legs, or they might put plastic, they're called skis on the back. And what that does is it helps to make a smoother ride. What I want to point out on this um, front wheeled walker is the red push buttons on the top of the walker. If you see on the top of the walker, there's red push buttons. And this allows the walker to be folded up and easily transported. So you just press the button in and you fold each end of the walker in on itself. When you unfold the walker, make sure you open it up and give it a little jiggle before you let the person take off on the walker. You should hear a little click as the pin locks in place. The next item is a four-wheeled walker. A four-wheeled walker has four wheels. Now, what's important to know about this walker, it has a seat. The seat should be used as needed if someone is using the walker and they get tired. Before they sit down on the walker to use it as a seat, the brakes should be engaged. This walker should not be used as a wheelchair. It is too high, the center of gravity, so it's easily tipped over. There are certain wheelchair walkers. There, it's like a hybrid, but one of these is not that. Um, this is a four-wheeled walker, has the seat, use the brakes whenever the person is going to be sitting down on it, or if they're using the walker and they come to a chair, um, and they're going to sit down, lock the brakes before they sit down, and then make sure the brakes are on before they stand up. All right. The next item, the next assist device is a cane. And uh, as much as possible, the cane should be always used on the patient or client's strong side. A wheelchair. A wheelchair has many removable parts. Uh, I think most common is the leg rests. In most wheelchairs, the leg rests, there's a little um, metal pin that you lift up on and the foot rests swing away. And this makes it easier and safer for someone to transfer from to and from the wheelchair. Sometimes they'll have removable armrests, which is nice. They'll have brakes, which you wanna make sure are on before the person gets in or out of the wheelchair. And um, transport chairs are wheelchairs with four small wheels. And usually it's lighter and easier for the person who's handling the wheelchair to move it around. 
So let's watch this video, loading and unloading a wheelchair from the car. Okay, this technique, it really works. It works with sedans, SUVs. So if you get it down with practice, it'll make your life a lot easier and protect your back. Hello, my name is Carrie Kampoff and I'm an occupational therapy student. Today, I'll be teaching you how to properly load a wheelchair into a car. So step one is take off the wheelchair footrests. Usually this is just by pulling a lever underneath the wheelchair and twisting it off. And you can just put these on your seat in the back seat of your car. Then next we're gonna fold the wheelchair up and all you have to do is make sure don't bend over, make sure to bend with your knees, pull up on this cushion here and then it will bring it folded into the middle. Then we're going to wheel the wheelchair close to the car. And then the crucial step is to put your brakes on because if we grab the wheels, we don't want the wheels to be moving on us. We're going to get the wheelchair nice and close. And then you can grab wherever is an anchored part of the wheelchair. So you can tilt back by grabbing onto the handles. Let's get the wheelchair a little bit closer here. And then we're just going to tilt it up. Grab the back of the wheel and nicely slide it in. Camera can you come over here and show them what it looks like? Now I'll show you how to unload the wheelchair, which is basically just reverse of how you load it in. All you need to do is grab the back wheels, tilt it at an angle so you don't hit the top of your car. You can also grab onto the handles and then tilt it all the way back until it's touching the ground. Then you're going to lift up onto the wheels and place it on the ground. And make sure when you're bending, you don't arch your back, you're pushing up from your legs. Now all you need to do is open up the wheelchair and put the foot, foot press on and you're good to go. Now we're going to go over how to get this wheelchair into your trunk. So we already talked about taking off your foot rest and folding the wheelchair up. A next very important step is placing an old blanket on top of your car just in case you would scrape any paint. So the next thing we're going to do is back the wheelchair up against the car so that the handles are near the back of your trunk. Then you're going to lock your brakes again. And now we're going to grab down by the wheels. It's important to note to grab onto the wheels rather than something like the armrest that could accidentally pop off while you're trying to do the transfer. Next you're going to bend down, make sure to bend with your legs and not crouch with your back to try to avoid any back injuries. And we're going to tilt the wheelchair back into the trunk. Then you're going to swing the bottom wheels up at an angle and then shimmy the wheelchair in. So now unloading the wheelchair is similar to loading it in. You're going to grab near the wheels and shimmy it out. Next, we're going to twist it over and tilt it back up. And then we're just going to ease it back down. Voila! Thank you. So again, it's um, all about practice. When you are helping someone in and out of the car, I want you to think that it's not the way you and I get in and out of the car, but we want their backsides in the car first. So they sit down first, then bring their legs in. To get out of the car, it's the opposite. Their legs come out first and then their backside comes out. Moving on with equipment found in the home. There is um, an electric hospital bed on the left and electric hospital beds usually have bed rails that you can lower and raise. 
And then the actual whole frame of the bed will lower and raise either by an electric, by a button that you push on the controls that controls the head and the feet raising, or by a crank that is found at the bottom of the bed. And so you see at the bottom of the bed between the two bottom wheels, there's a cylinder and there's a shaft, a crank that goes in that shaft. And by cranking that, you can raise the frame of the bed up and down. I suggest that if you're gonna be making a bed, if you're going to be doing a bed bath, that you bring someone up to your level so that you're not bending over. A bedside commode is also a, a very common piece of equipment that you'll find in the home. Um, when used at the side of the bed, this commode chair has a bucket that just can be emptied and cleaned and put right back in. Now what's nice is this bedside commode can also be used as a frame over a toilet. So you remove the bucket and you take the whole frame and put it over the toilet. Um, what's nice about that is if the person you're caring for needs some help standing, they need something to push on and there's nothing around for them to grab, this is nice because it allows them those handles. Sometimes people use these in the shower. I don't recommend that because water gets into the metal tubing and it gets quite messy. The last piece of equipment and one that I recommend everyone have is a shower bench, shower chair with a back. Do not use anything but a shower chair. We don't want to use a chair from the backyard. We don't want to use one of those white garden chairs. I've had several students tell me that their loved ones have fallen in the shower when those white resin garden chairs um, disintegrated in the shower. So we want to make sure we have something that has a good back that is for the shower. This chair, um, you can raise the height up and down and then it has non-skid grips on the bottom of the chair. But there's lots of different variations of shower chairs. Uh, these are a few items that help someone just make their life a little bit easier. I love this adjustable bed rail. You can buy this on Amazon. You can get it on walmart.com. What I like is it's a bed rail that goes between the mattress and the box spring, and then it it's secured. Um, it allows, has a little pocket, allows people to keep some of their stuff in that pocket. But anyone who may need a little bit of help rolling over in bed, a little bit of help standing up from bed, or if you wanna make sure someone doesn't roll out of bed, this is really nice to have. Um, this one that shows on the left does not have legs extending all the way down to the bottom, but you can get them with legs extending down to the bottom and those legs are usually adjustable. If you have someone that is in bed or in a chair most of the time, these high low bedside tables are really nice. They move very easily under the bed and so let's say someone needs to, you know, you're want, trying to get someone some things to do to make them a little bit independent. And you could put some things like perhaps they're grooming to wash their face or to put on makeup. You could put those items on this bedside table and roll it over the bed and they would have access. Maybe it's a washcloth and a mirror so that they can wash their face, um, brush their teeth, put on makeup or lotion. Um, and then also mealtime. It's really easy to adjust this high, low, and where you need it so that people could feed themselves a little bit easier. Other safety equipment for the bathroom, in, uh, specifically, this first item on the left is a U-shaped grab bar. The great thing about this is that it no, does not need construction. It goes onto the side of a fiberglass tub. So it makes it really nice for people that are renting um, apartments or condos and they're not allowed to do construction. Um, you just place the two edges over the side of the tub and then you crank the tension rod and it holds it very securely in place. This is very secure and it's easily removable. Okay, the next item of safety equipment is the suction grab bar. These are so popular and most people have these in their homes. And most people will tell you that in the middle of the night, those things pop off, fall down and, and wake everybody up. Um, I wanna encourage you that 
if you're caring for someone who has one of these in their home, that you make sure that you give it a little pull before you allow your patient or client to put their full body weight through it. I had a patient who in her 90s was very independent, lived alone, took her own shower every day. And one day she put her body weight through that grab bar and it gave way. She fell down on the floor of her shower and laid there for two days with the water running. So um, she was terrified to get back in the shower and it took us months to get her back in the shower. So just always make sure that you give it a little tug, make sure that is connected well to the, to the wall. All right, the next item is a floor to ceiling transfer pole. These work really great in tight spaces. And if you had someone who needed help toileting, um, if they couldn't stand on their own, but could stand with help, they may be able to stand and hold on to the grab bar while you pull pants or underwear up and down and, and help with toileting. This bar could also be used to help someone get in and out of the bathtub, which is really nice. I've also seen them next to people's beds. So they work really good. Some of the models need to be secured um, in the ceiling, but this one that's pictured here is like a, a shower rod, uh, like a shower rod. It's just a tension rod. Okay, we talked um, on day one or back in one of the early modules about home safety and how it's nice to remove all of the loose throw rugs. I recommend that. So what do we put down instead? These non-skid adhesive strips, you can buy them in multiple shapes and sizes. These work really good. They have a little bit of texture on the top. So I've put them around toilets. I've put them by sinks. I've put them in and out of showers just gives someone a little bit of security knowing that their feet won't slip. Bathroom safety, we've talked about lots of night lights. Those motion sensor ones are really good. And then another piece of equipment that does not need construction is this toilet grab bar frame. Um, what you need to do is just remove the toilet seat. You put the frame down and put the screws back in, put the toilet seat back on, and these are adjustable wide and narrow, and then also up and down. All right, so that concludes our equipment found in the home. We'll see you back here um, for module 13.